Welcome to Southlands. My name's Hannah and myself and the other girls are going to be teaching you a lesson about how to handle your money. We want you to take what we teach you back to your schools along with the sheets and money diaries that are in front of you and teach it to the rest of your class. So you have to listen carefully because you're going to be teaching what you learn to everyone else. The first session we did, uh, there were seven schools involved uh, and four children from each of the schools. They were then charged with going back to their school to teach a lesson in a similar format. Uh, and today, uh, one of the schools, St Peter's, their four children now delivered that lesson. The same material, but in their own style. Hello everybody, and welcome to your money management lesson. We are here today to discuss how to handle your money wisely, and you will learn about mortgages, accounts and savings. And also, you, we will teach you all about debt. It was really great, like, seeing how what we taught them went on to affect the rest of the class and all the, all the children looked like they were really enjoying it. In this lesson we will be exploring the difference between needs and wants. Look in your folder you will find a blank piece of paper. Get your pencil out and draw a line down the middle. Do you think this is a want or a need? The lesson they did today was kind of the same as ours, but they can, we can tell that they've put their own kind of twist on it. Kerry usually gets on with her mum, but recently their household bills have gone up and they have started arguing because Kerry's mum thinks that Kerry's wasting money. I didn't think they would be as confident about the lesson as they were and they, they had a really good understanding of, of, of the lesson and, and about money and finance. Kerry's mum went to work at 7.30am and left the carrier note with a list of items that you need to buy. You don't have enough money to buy all, all the items on the list, so choose carefully. I personally think that at the age of 10 and 11, it's about the right age when they start to take notice of things. And I think the sooner they learn about it, the, the more... Um, aware they will be as they grow of what they're taking on so that you know when they get the first credit card they're not going to just simply spend 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 on it because they've got a whatever two thousand pound limit on it if you go into debt it's a uh, very bad well it's all right if you can pay it back but if you can't it's bad i think because they were teaching to their own friends they were, i think the people who they were teaching to let understood it more because they were coming from people of their own age. The sweet taste of money, 6th of March. Dear Diary, as soon as I got my pocket money today, I hurried to the sweet shop down the road. It was amazing. There were so many sweets and chocolates. There were shelves and shelves of sweets, humbugs, gummy, gummy bears, licorice laces, fudge and toffees. I think perhaps it was nicer for the children to learn from students for a change and maybe because it was a bit different, they listened a bit more. I thought it went very well. I loved the fact that they, um, they had actually doctored the PowerPoint and they'd put in little bits about St Peter's. I enjoyed it because it was really fun and um, it gave me a bit more confidence because I was teaching people that I know. Everybody stand up. We're going to do a true or false quiz and then right at the end we'll ask you some general knowledge questions. If you think an answer is true you put your hands on your head if you think you if you think the answer is false you put your hands on your backside i like doing the quiz because um when we read the story we had to answer questions on it and it was good because it showed like it helped us learn more about the story because we learned what some of the words meant the four children presenting the lesson had to cooperate and each had a very clearly defined role as you saw uh, the children that were part of the audience, if you like, had to cooperate in order to be good listeners and participate in the lesson. Um, you know, if they had been switched off and not paying attention, the children doing the presentation would have lost confidence. Knowing that I had a part in inspiring um, that teaching lesson, it felt really good because they did such a good job and I feel like I'm... Um, I'm playing a part in their lives and how I'm going to help them in the future um, to prepare for um, financing and college and university and being able to do um, being able to handle the money really well. 
We're delighted with impact. Of the seven schools, I know that six now have delivered that lesson to their year six and year five class as well, which is good. The more the, more the better as far as we're concerned. We are, ourselves, uh, after half term, got five more schools who are going to send four children to be trained in the same way. Equally importantly, also, um, um, along with PFEG, that we want to train secondary schools, so we're looking for secondary schools, first of all, in the northwest area, where our children can train a small group of their children, and they can then do what we're doing with our primary schools, with their primary schools. It was nice to think that we'd inspired it because I think it can go a lot further than it has done. Seeing how quickly it spread to a group of children and I think it could spread even quicker to another group of children and it'll just branch out and it'll get quicker and quicker and it's really nice.